This one. Did you start it already? I did. Oh. I don't know what's happening here. This is this is our show. Hi guys. <clears throat> Good evening. Hello. I'm Judge James. I'm Judge Evie. And I'm getting sick just watching you right now. <laughs> Welcome to Living for Crits. Sunday night, the big save against fear edition of this show. Can you stop <laughs> for just a second? And think about the viewers at home right now trying to watch you spin in a circle like a maniac. No, I stopped for a second. Anyway, this is the effect of a weekend of a convention, apparently. Okay, I'll stop. That's what it does to you. All right, well, I hope everyone's having a good time tonight, <laughs> just hanging out, watching some, watching us spin in circles. Mm -hmm. Tonight's episode of Living for Crits will be us talking about Crumbies. why Judge Evie can't sit closer to me in the vi in the videos because she's really Hi, far away. Hi, Mom. Do I need to move this? You're not giving me enough chair room here. All right, there we go. I'm trying to lean I comfortably. I do anything. Anyway. Um, all right. I think some big news this week. We discovered that we're both Gryffindor. That's a big deal. I've been as a Gryffindor for like a year and a half by now. I had no clue. Cooper started watching the, uh, what, what are they called? The, the Harry <laughs> the Potter Harry movies. Harry Potter dad. And I took the Harry Potter test because there's a test apparently you can take to see what house the hat would put you in. And the hat, which is like the seventh grader hat, right? No, I feel like a, it's more like a backwards hat. Yeah, this is the hat. It, the naming hat goes in your head, and it's like, oh, you should be in this house. And then you say, no, I don't want to be in that house. I want to be in some other house. Like, okay, that's fine. Gryffindor. Anyway, Gryffindor. for some I reason, you in Gryffindor you I was in it. Gryffindor, along with you and your brother. And your mom and sister are Hufflepuffs. I guess sucks to be them. Yeah. Has anything actually happened with the Hufflepuffs in that entire series? I don't like, think so. I mean, they really seem like kind of like... Lame. Yeah, I mean, it's all about, so far, only two movies in. Because I've only seen the first three movies. I don't four. remember. I don't I remember two through four. I remember the first one. Uh -huh. Just like I remember the first Twilight the best. Because it's essentially the same yeah. movie. Twilight is the same movie. No, as it's not. yes, it is. Twilight is so much better. It's than the Harry same Potter. movie. Scott Woodard's on. What's up, Scott? So, I bet he's a. I bet he's a Gryffindor. No, I could see him as like a Ravenclaw. You th what Ravenclaws mean nothing. They are totally Rude. pointless. What do they even do in that show? I don't know. John movie. wears a Ravenclaw hoodie all the time, and he won't take it off, and it's kind of becoming a problem. I think Ravenclaw is the kind. I mean, unless something happens later on in the series, I think Ravenclaw is the 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 this the house, the school, whatever they're called. I think they are the group that is best for fan fiction because no one talks about them. Nothing happens yeah. with them. They're not interesting. You got Gryffindor and Slytherin, and that's all it is. That's yeah. the show. That's the whole movie. Just saying. Okay. Well, now that we explain Harry Potter. So. Let's go into uh, Judge Edie Presides. And we've got the first one here is actually from Scott Woodard. This Why don't you read this one here? Hi guys, Judge Edie. Any recommendations for great published Halloween adventures for DCC? That's exactly how he talks, by the way. It is. I know from You experience. can go for the first recommendation. Yeah. Yes, he's exactly how he sounds. All right, yeah. first recommendation is yours. Okay, I said Carnival of the Darned by David Beatty. Oh, I'm losing things over here. Yeah, you can't lose all these stuff, Dad. Carnival of the Damned Darned. by David Beatty. The adventure that turned Judge Evie into Judge Evie. This is by Purple Sorcerer Games. You can get it from Purple Sorcerer Games. This is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful open world kind of... Uh, you're in a... You're in a, a, a carnival. The art is absolutely fantastic. It's got great art by everyone from um, our you know favorite Doug Kovacs to Todd McGowan, Danny Prescott, and Stan Reed, and Simon Todd. 
it essentially says zero level funnel where you are fighting an evil clown god. So nothing can go wrong there. Most of the events, the the features of the of the this tournament style funnel are clown or carnival based. So you're going from scene to scene trying to get through evil, demented clown moments. I've run it as a tournament funnel for a special Halloween game a few years back at our local game club back in Pittsburgh, the Norman Game Nights. And when we ran it, we just, we went through as many rooms as we could and had a really good time. And whoever whoever won the most rooms got the prizes. Yes, and we have some of the art on our walls. For instance, this, this art wall. is on our wall in yeah, our in our apartment. Find, I saw some other ones. We gave those little Yeah, there are some others prizes. in here that were in here. I'm trying to find it now. Here, talk a bit. Who else has joined? Hi, Someone else joined. Who else joined? Um, Greg did. Okay. Oh, yeah, we have the original of this on our wall. So this art on page 51, we have the original. And this is, uh, I think this is Todd McGowan's also. So, this is pretty good. Todd says DCC Horror. So, we're into the DCC Horror. Oh. This isn't the DCC Horror show. We're talking DCC Horror. I have my own vote. Not that I don't like Carnival of the Doomed. Darned. Darned. I am a fan of Sky of Crimson Flame by Thorin Thompson. This was a kickstarted adventure a few years back. And Sky of Crimson Flame features a couple things that are really cool. First off, it's a full zero-level funnel adventure. Second off, there is a Blight of the Eastern Forest campaign setting in this one. So this is a pretty great adventure. What I love about this adventure is I feel like... So for me, horror... I'm not a big horror fan in the traditional sense that like, I don't like to watch scary movies to be scared. I like to watch scary movies to get inspiration to throw people through sp scary scenes. But I do like certain kinds of horror. Uh, I like anything that, that was done, uh, any of the, the Evil Dead stuff especially. And I really got a strong Evil Dead feel to this. Uh, I don't know, there's a lot of crazy over-the-top horror scenes, flying skulls, skinless people, uh, you know, having to stop a crazy ceremony. It's a really, really tight... Uh, you know, uh, well-written adventure that I was kind of, it was one of my, my, that was my thir first third-party adventure I ever kickstarted. And I was, I don't know, I was very pleasantly surprised. Not that this adventure was great for a third-party adventure. Uh, and third-party products for the DCC are all pretty darn good. This is maybe one of the best adventures. I took maybe two sessions to run it and I was enthralled. Great adventure. Remember playing in this? Yes. She's lying. Boo! I don't know, this is scary. <laughs> I'm putting this back on the shelf here. We'll put this back on the shelf here. We'll talk a bit for the next question, because Greg Schwartzkopf has a question for us. I want you to read his question. <laughs> Stop it. All right. <laughs> read Greg's question. Okay. How does X Crawl campaign differ from the Dungeon Crawl campaign? Hex Crawl, not X Crawl. I said Hex Crawl. I was like Hex Crawl. Keep reading. Yeah, Hex Crawl. Keep reading. That's it. Keep reading. That's oh, it. how is a Hex Crawl different? If you've never run a Hex Crawl, what a hex crawl is compared to a typical uh, adventure or, or you know campaign is you are going from scene, from square or hex to hex across a map and random things occur as you go from hex to hex. The best example I could give in basic D and D would have been the Isle of Dread adventure, which you could actually buy from Goodman Games in their uh, either their their basic version or their well, what's it called? Their 5E version that you could buy. Because Judge Eevee does love 5E. Right? You love 5E? Oh, he wants you to buy Gen Con Why did our email just pop up for no reason? It wants you to buy Gen Con merch. We're going to get rid of that. Quit. Um, what is it? Swordfish Islands? There's a couple other hex crawls that are out there uh, that you could purchase. My favorite hex crawl, of course, is <laughs> Peril of the Purple Planet. 
because it is a great and wonderful hex crawl where you've no idea what's going on from, from hex to hex and you're trying to get off the purple planet. You know, I, I, I say Greg's it sounds like a, like a plot point campaign. I'd say the closest plot point campaign to a hex crawl would be the 50 Fathoms plot point campaign because you're on the open seas and you can go anywhere. In a hex crawl, you could go anywhere. And some of the plot point campaigns for Savage Worlds, such as, um, uh, I'm trying to think here, Necessary Evil or the older ones, some of the Deadlands ones, you can't just go anywhere, or East Texas University. They're driven by events, not driven by where you're going to on a map. Whereas a hex crawl is clearly map driven, so that's my take. I think that you a campaign for DCC it's not hex crawl driven as you're stringing adventures along possibly or together that are either your own adventures or adventures that you've 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 purchased uh, that maybe your the characters show up at the adventure more in an episodic fashion. Whereas a hex crawl is you are having adventures during your walk there. There's you are role playing out every moment from when you're going through the the desert wastes to when you're resting at night. So, Judge Evie, given that you've never been in a hex crawl, what's a hex crawl you've liked? That one. You never were in that one. He's like, I don't remember. Uh, if you're looking for a hex crawl, my recommendation for a hex crawl. If you never played a hex crawl before, oh, I think I was in that. We haven't started it yet. We tried. No, we but Moon Slaves of the Cannibal Kingdom, like, I wanted to run this, like, and we is stalled that out. The one that like we tried them, you had yeah. your big thing plan. Yeah. My my glow burn co-host Mark Plord runs a wonderful mutant crawl classics hex crawl that I have not participated in very much because I'm a terrible person. So terrible. So that's a hex crawl. Uh, just get hit more. I went straight from running zero level funnels to Purple Planet as a baby judge. It was eye opening. Yeah, I you know it, Purple Planet's a big step. It's one thing if you're running the zero level funnel that's featured in there, which is like like Escape from the Purple Planet, but to run it as a full bore campaign, that's it's a lot in there, especially with the artifacts and whatnot. It, it's it's a great 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 uh, adventure though. Reign of Peace is on. Who's that? Can't remember. I mean, once Reign of Peace says who they are, I'm like, oh, that's right. I'm pretty sure it's Paul. Like 97% sure it's Paul. It's Paul! Look at that! He says Paul. Oh, my gosh. Why don't people have their actual names on Twitch? From today. You know, Paul. Like, who's Paul? Wait. Sat to my right in, our, in all our games. Paul. His daughter plays. His wife played. His daughter played. Um, yeah. Burn. Yes! Yay! Got it right. Anyway. I'm not good with names. She's terrible with names. <laughs> terrible. Um, I'm off track here. I'm lost here. Anyway, we're going to talk about Save Against Fear now, I think. Anyway, if you if you do want to send us more questions, we're happy to read them and show off how Judge Evie preps so little for this show. It's dccjudgeevie at gmail.com to send her a question and watch her fuddle around. I get to watch her fuddle around for trying to figure out, like, maybe why. Like, what does she remember from gaming today? What was your favorite horror adventure you ever played in? She's no idea. Either my adventures aren't scary or... Or I don't know what what I don't know. I, I'm failing as a father. Judge Sean is on. What's up, Sean? The spelling looks right. Is it the same Sean that sent us the question? Maybe it is. Some question. The it's road crew shout, shout out. Okay, you get to hear that in her crazy voice soon. Save against fear. Woo! Harrisburg, PA. The Bodana Group. Run it. Woo! Run it. Run it. Run runs it. This is their this is their mission or their goal is the Bodana Group advocates the use of tabletop gaming as a directed therapeutic and clinical practice that can benefit personal growth as well as enhance social and educational services to individuals and families. Basically, they believe that the inherent benefit one gets from playing games can be focused and utilized to make one better. Better at math or reading, better at socialization, socializing or emotional expressions, better at coping skills, better at life. I gotta say. All right, so last year's Save Against Fear convention, it was a mixed bag. I had a really good time hanging with Evie, and I had a really good time hanging with Brendan LaSalle, <laughs> and I had a really good time like having dinner after the con, and I ran one really good game, but then I had a bunch of people not show to my second two games, 
and I get to by play with Brendan. Yeah, by zero. all. Oh, yeah. So it's Bass Pro Shops. We have the Bass Pro Shops because they have the, the, the cleanest bathroom at Save Against Fear. Uh, not Save Against Fear's fault, but the, like that. Right, it's at the Harrisburg Mall. So it's an older mall. If you go and use the bathroom in the back of their area, it could be full. It, you know, and, and and use the line. So you may have to use the bathrooms somewhere else. And the, the Bass Pro Shops bathrooms are the best bathrooms. I wrote a blog post actually last year. If you're living for crits.com, you can and you search for Save Against Fear, you can find my blog post from last year. And I had a good time last year, but not a great time. This year, this year was pretty awesome. This year was cool. Do you have a badge? I don't. Lame. I was prepped. That's Judge Evie's badge. Oh, I gotta cover my name. Yeah, I don't cover know who I am. <laughs> they can't know who I am. I think the, the attendance this year is about 500 people. It's at the Harrisburg no, Mall. 400. 400 people at the Harrisburg Mall in the old Boscov store. And you, mm -hmm. it, it's right across from uh, the Town Place Suites. There was an RV show while we were there. We got to go check that out a little bit. And it was a really, really good time. All four of my events sold out. I had all my players for all the events. So we thought tonight... We would share about what made Save Against Fear our first impressions of the con this year, uh, our impressions of the con uh, of just what we did at the con, and then maybe what we thought about what we're thinking about for next year. And uh, Paul well, Joint was at the con with us with his family. We saw a lot of folks from last year. My one game I had last year was a Mutant Crawl Classics game, which is my Waterworld themed Nothing's Free in Ocean World. And two of the players today. Uh, Erica and oh, well, I can't remember his name. The other guy that was there with Erica. No, I remember it. John? I know it's terrible. No. Josh. Jacob. No, it's not. I thought it was Jay. No, Jacob was later. Nick. Erica and Nick. They were in my Ocean World adventure last year. Remembered it, and so they had a really good time, and that was very nice. So my let's what, not me. What was your basic impression? Your feedback about this con this year? Like, first an impression? Yes. Impressions of how things went. Oh, so not like what it looks like. The whole thing. Tell okay. us about what you thought of the con. Oh, it was good. I'm very descriptive over here. Okay, so, impression. Um, there was more people. There were. Um, there was a Goodman booth. There was a Goodman Games booth run by Brett Brooks or... Panda Brett, if you go to the Goodman <laughs> Games website, and Brendan LaSalle. Um, there were different chairs. Because people complained about having bad chairs last year. So there were good chairs this year. Um, okay, my description of this year is last year there seemed to be more GMs than players. Or at least oh, yeah. that was a that was a challenge. A lot of tables where they were, and they changed. I think it's tabletop events they went to for the uh, event sign up. So event sign up was a lot clearer this year. It wasn't paper based, which is great. And I felt like there were, I don't know. I felt like it was a better flow to the convention. There was always something to do. What's great about a small convention compared to a large, you know, Gen Con or PAX. You know, you can be, you spend two, there's nothing different whether you're at a PAX or I'm sorry, at a Gen Con or at this, or Gary Con or, uh, or, or, or Save Against Fear. There's nothing different from when you're at the table running a game for four to six people as a, as a GM, as a judge. It's a very similar experience. But how is the time between your games? Are you, are you frantic? Are you running around? Are you just kind of going crazy, like trying to get ready for something else? And it's really, really nice having a room, one room, one big department store size area where you could easily, yeah, a boss comps, where you can go from playing a game to, uh, like, like with a role playing game, go get dinner or come back and play whatever the board game was you played last night. What was that called? Shmoovie. The Shmoovie, the Shmoovie game, which was a good time. So going through our con experience, it, the con ran three days, Friday through Sunday. We couldn't be there Friday because work. And but we got there Friday night. Uh, en route, we discovered the most Pennsylvania of all foods in that there is now a Wawa pierogi quesadilla. You don't know what a pierogi is, 
It's Get essentially out. a ravioli stuffed with mashed potatoes and cheese. How would you not know what a pierogi is? Because I didn't know until I moved to Pittsburgh. And now they make a pierogi quesadilla, which is they take a pierogi uh, tortilla and they fill it with mashed potatoes, uh, caramelized onions, and cheddar cheese. And they make a quesadilla out of it. And if it had hot sauce, it would have been epic. It was okay. It was you a have solid hot okay. Sauce there. I know, but I didn't get it because their hot sauce is Texas Pete. I don't like Texas Pete. Okay. And um, Friday night, what do we do? We went to Ruby Tuesdays. Ruby Tuesdays. And if you checked my in, uh, the living for Crit's Instagram, you would have known that because I posted about it. It was a pretty epic night at Ruby Tuesdays. Kind of slow service. I mean, there was no one there. But a lot of good chatting. Greg thinks sounds edible. That's about as basic as the pierogi was. You had a good dessert there, though, right? Ruby Tuesdays? What did I even get? I don't know. Got some cake thing. That must have been good. It was so memorable. The, the other dessert was a lot more memorable. Saturday, we woke up, uh, went to the convention, got set up, and I ran Metal Mike's Mercs, which is a adventure for Numenera out of, I think it was the fourth or fifth Cyphercaster magazine that I wrote. And it, it featured Into the Night, the space, the spaces part of Numenera. We had a really good time with that. Paul was in that adventure. Well, while you did that, me and Mom went on a mission to go find Brendan breakfast and then all of us breakfast. So we left, and we were walking. We had to go to McDonald's to get something for Brendan. So we go there, and then we're like, maybe we could go to Duncan instead. So we go to the Duncan parking lot, and there were no spots left. And then this one person, they wanted Duncan, I guess, so bad, they just parked in the middle of the parking lot, like the, the dead center. <laughs> so then we had to leave there and we went to McDonald's, and then we got that stuff there. They almost messed the order up, but it was fine. Um, and I was, like, singing a song. I was singing the Build to a Law song from Schoolhouse Rock, and then Mom told the guy that was working, like, Evie, I don't think this guy wants to hear you sing. And he just kind of stared at me, and it was really awkward. But then we went Sounds like our to, show. Yeah. <laughs> then we went to Starbucks and we got drinks there. They were fine. And then we went back to the thing and we gave food to everybody. After that, I ran Dungeon Crawl Classics. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, you. We ran we. an adventure that I called The Cursed Fourth Wall. And essentially it was a reverse Sailors in a Starless Sea. So, which is this adventure in reverse where you started at the, uh, what's it called? The, the very bottom of the adventure, the ziggurat and had to make your way out, out of the, of the, of the dungeon, you know, oh, iron, iron DM 72 said we're awesome. Look at that. He means me, not he you. He says you guys. That's right. He meant me. So I'm right now the size of two guys after I've eaten this weekend. In our adventure for the Cursed Fourth Wall, the fourth wall break we had was that Judge Evie played as the demon lord. Vicky! And we had this scene, so they had opened up this this package, and the demon, or this, this sphere, the demon lord appeared, and it was Vicky, okay? And uh, she got to be the co-GM and equal, um, she, was, she was omnipotent and can do anything she wanted in the game, including killing player characters. Which I did. Which is a fun, a fun, I almost burped. Uh, a fun, uh, a fun part of the the adventure. Um, and it was a good time. It was a little off the rails at times. Judge Evie was very adversarial <laughs> against the players. This is our first attempt to try this format with well, a. I thought you'd be mean. A, I did. I didn't think you'd be so mean. Well, you told she me was mean. so mean to the player characters. It was really pretty brutal. But, you know, we, we, we tinker with it a bit. We ran again the next day in a different format. We also went to the RV show. Yeah. And that was kind of cool. That was right next door to the... Uh, so after hitting Bass Pro Shops up to use their restroom and then go over and just check out fishing stuff, which is... Yeah. They had a lot of great t-shirts. They did have a lot <laughs> of great t-shirts. Then we went to the RV show. Well, no, there was a giant fish. There was a giant fish. There was this huge catfish in captivity. Like, I wanted to let it free. I feel so bad for all those I fishies. So did I. They're just like stuck there. And they're like, hey, hey. While we were at the RV show, I was trying to think of, I think someone commented on Facebook, just if I lived in an RV, 
like permanently. Because I the kind of videos I watch on YouTube are either you know these the, this couple that sails around the world <laughs> on a boat, they are in Boston or this couple weekend. that lives in a scamp trailer, and that's all they live in, and and they they live off the land and whatnot, and they. They just, you know, live day to day. And I try to think of if I was doing that, what game of all my games, what would I have with me at any given time? See, wait, okay, so you could take Savage Worlds, you can clump it together. Well, the only right? thing in Savage Worlds is with the new Savage Worlds box. There's This is, like, actually full with stuff. And I just like the idea that if I can only bring one game... This would well, cover no. everything, including you every could genre. Put that, and then you could put a core book in. Yeah, and I don't know what I would bring from these core books, though. Like, I mean, I don't. It's it's a tough question. I think well, you see you it a lot online. I've seen people have these conversations. What would you? If you only have one book or one product, what would you have? I think and easy. well, for the longest time, I mean, I would say for years, I used to say that the D and D rule cyclopedia from Basic D and D would be the book. But I don't think the D and D Basic rules really. They don't do it for me anymore. They, I'd rather play Dungeon Crawl Classics. What? They don't do it for me anymore. 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 <laughs> Tell you what I wouldn't bring is 5e. Yeah. Like, anyway. you spend your one game on 5e. Iron DM says five, DCC, and uh, Jessica Hitmore says, oh my god, I want to play with Judge <laughs> Evie. No, you, everyone says that, and they do. You can ask Paul. <laughs> It's all downhill from playing with Judge Evie because you just realize that no one kills you better, I guess. I don't know. I think with DCC, I, I don't know which... which ver I, I, I would definitely bring it with me. That's not even a question. I don't know which adventure to bring with me, though. All right. Well, that was that was Saturday at the con. And then afterwards, we went to La Fiesta. That was La last Fiesta. night. And La Fiesta was pretty awesome. Oh, I got some pictures here. That's a restaurant in Harrisburg, and it. When you go inside, it feels like you're at like the like the. I don't know. It's a. It felt to me like I was inside of the the Me the Mexico Pavilion at Disney World. It was really pretty. This cool. is what the background looked like. You can't see that. I know, but I don't want to show the actual picture because it's really bad. They can't see that. I mean, it doesn't. Don't want to see the background picture. Help at all. Because look what Brian. We have some right comments here. coming. Has some comments. So Savage Scott has experienced a game with Judge Evie. I apologize. Uh, Paul is saying Stacy's frog splat on the ziggurat will live in memories <laughs> forever. That was pretty good. Uh, Judge Sean says DCC killed the rule cyclopedia like a zero level character in Judge <laughs> Evie Adventure. And Paul says talked into that by Vicky, the demon queen is played by Judge Evie. I'm going to give it to Sean. The one thing I will say that the rules uh, cyclopedia does better is it does have like rules for mass combat and doing building castle stuff and for some reason judge evie's no longer in the video why are you gone where'd you go i'm reading the questions you can't read that from a distance your eyes is better than mine kid your eyes that's worse than grandma's no it's not yeah it is because i try her glasses on she's like your glasses are worse than mine everyone said that they're worse than grandma's okay i have craptastic eyes <laughs> craptastic eyes hashtag craptastic eyes so anyway, La Fiesta was good. Sunday. I got fried ice cream. Sunday yeah, was ice today ice. is Sunday. I ran Sailors in a Starless Sea with featuring Vicky. You're spelling Vicky wrong. We it's had a forward. We ran a forward version of Sailors in a Starless Sea. You can just leave it go. No. Which meant I ran it the normal way with a couple of tweaks in there. Now shoot, it's with a Y. V I C K Y. Yeah, it's always been with a Y. I'm, I changed it yesterday when you spelled it wrong. We had a really good game no, today. It was Scott, the closest it's with a Y. It was the closest I've run sailors without going off the rails completely in a very long time. Paul got it right. Had a really good group of players. I think my players today I don't know, my players this entire weekend were some of my favorite players I've had at a convention ever. <laughs> Paul included. Just a really solid group of folks that were very involved in the game the entire time through. Why are you upset? Because Scott keeps spelling it wrong. Oh the K. my God! Scott uh, Paul says, "Craptastic right eyes." I mean, tell you about Stacy cleaning my glasses while I was driving us home, and my comment on what I couldn't really see. I can't see any of my glasses. Same. Yeah. Like, like my hands blurry. My second game I ran today. I mean, it's gonna go down. Was my when I felt so terrible. It was rushed, and that was I ran Numenera Flight of the Seraph, 
and that, that Numenera adventure is out of the Explorer's Keys books. I'm not going to pull it out. But a, a kaiju versus kaiju adventure, essentially. And a really great module. The players had some really awesome ideas. Uh, I run all my Numenera excuse me, games now with some Mad Lib features. So I let the player characters describe the weird of the game ahead of time and set a bit of a story of what's around them. Let them decide what town they come from, what the weird of the town is, all that stuff. Uh, so we had a, they, they, some really cool world building, and that was a great adventure also. So if, wow. Flight of the Seraph, I will say, if, if you it's out of Explorer's Keys for Numenera, the new... Um, adventure module when you get it you probably need to add a little bit to the adventure it's by bruce cordell it's a wonderful module but it's like a three mo hour module on its own so you're gonna add some meat scott's running scott see you sir let's discuss Wait. About what i'm telling them what i did while you're running the monera you didn't do anything yes i did i went on an what'd entire what'd you do adventure what'd you do so it was called adventures with edie and brendan so, he was really hungry, so he wanted to go get food. But we want, I, we wanted to go like around the mall first. So first, we, he had to go to the bathroom. So we, I took him... <laughs> I'm sure he loves. <laughs> I took him past the foot massage place. <laughs> and there's a video of, of someone's foot, up close shot of someone's toes getting massaged. And he started laughing. And so then we walked buy it and there was a person inside getting their foot massaged <laughs> so funny is that the gaming stuff now i mean gaming questions <laughs> okay. come through so then we went out and we went into the bookstore and we looked at uh the rpgs and there was like a lot so of D &D stuff much 5e <laughs> stuff it was redonkulous that's the world now so after that we went out of those doors and he's like i want food and then he found the soul food place and i'm like and it just said um feed your soul and i said i don't want to feed my soul to you so then he's like come on i want to get some cornbread so we went in there and he popped his head in and it was like dead in there no one was in there and so he popped out and we just started looking around like what the heck and then a guy came out, and he's like, oh, hi, are you interested in this? And he's like, yeah. He's like, we open in two weeks. So that's Hope a, you can come back. That's a place for next year, though. I know. It was funny, because he was like, two weeks. It's a place for next year. That's probably why it was all, like, under construction and stuff still. You know? I mean, they were, they were working on it. Kind of like when we went to the – you weren't there, but your mom and I went to the local IHOP when we first moved here, and we couldn't – we, we, there was no one there to, to serve us, and we thought just that the service was bad. It just was they weren't open yet. Yeah. Got some questions. Wait, I'm I, not done with the story. <sighs> okay, so after that, I was like, "Why?" There's a Sheets right next to us, and he was Sheets. like, "I'm like, well, just go to Sheets. You stuff there." And he's like, "No, I am not going oh, to a freaking crack gas station." To get lunch, and I'm like, "But it has food there." He's like, "No, it doesn't. You go there to get gas." And so we turn the corner, and he's like, oh, you do look, it's hibachi. And I'm like, that looks really scary. And he's like, let's go see it in the hibachi. He's like, ew, a buffet. See, they won't cook at your table for that. And so I'm like, well, there's just sheets right there. And he's like, no, I'm not going to a gas station. So he walks back up this, this hill. And we were, like, walking through the grass and stuff to get to these it's places. the longest story ever. And we ever. finally... We're walking back, and he was so it's a sad. Podcast. He's like, "Let's go to Applebee's." I'm like, "You know what? I don't care anymore where you end up going because I already eat." You know, I was gonna. She went to and Applebee's. Walk. No, so on our way to Applebee's, he looked over. And he's like, "What is this?" And so we basically passed this like, I don't know what it was. It's like um, I think a Panda Express is. Yeah. But it was like better than that. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. he went in there, and he got food there. And he's like, we passed this. You ate it better than Panda Express? Yeah. That's the restaurant name. Yeah. Let's answer the questions. And then, <sighs> so then we went back in, and I you put all of my raffle tickets in these things We're called... get to this. Oh, we are? No, it's not. It's not even on the notes. Seen Abe Simpson tells better stories. You know what? I'm better than Abe Simpson. Let's 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 answer some questions, okay? So Judge Sean's asking. There were. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Iron GM seventy two asked James why Numenera. 
Never played it. Numenera. This is one of the books. So if you've never seen Numenera, this is the Numenera. Numenera is... Why Numenera? Because I've been playing Numenera. Uh, Numenera sort of started... None of this here. None of this. None of this. This would be here without Numenera. So it's important to talk about that. Numenera was a game that I discovered in 2013. Not long after discovering Savage Worlds. And it opened my eyes to role-playing games... Uh, in, a, in a way different than D&D &D had. It was a, a really, really fun, cool system, the Cypher system, that was, I don't know, allowed you to have more of a storytelling experience than just, for me, I know other games do this, but Numenera was mine, than uh, than than D and D, and it also, but it still had the D and D loot grab features of having cool artifacts to find and pick up, and in 2014. I started a blog because of Numenera. We ran a, Numen a family Numenera game that was a Disney-themed family Numenera game in which you played... Anna. Anna the from... The Nano. No, you weren't a Nano. Yes, I was. You, you were not. You were a Jack. You were a something Nana. Jack who... No, 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 no. I was. Were you? Was I Nano something else? Though? You were a Glaive then. You were a Jack. You were a Jack. You were Jack. Your mom was a Glaive who carried a quiver. You was were a Jack. Was Nano? Kara was the Nano. I'm sorry. I'm mixed up. But we played this long-running, like 20-plus session-long uh, uh, Numenera campaign. What was I Nano in, though? I, don't I remember. always, I remember. And that playing campaign Nano. and that blog kicked off Living for Crits blog, which kicked off Living for Crits YouTube channel, which kicked off Living for Crits this. And and now Jen Here works for now Jen works for Monty Cook Games, and it's all history from there. And our family is forever torn. At gaming conventions, so I tried to split my time this time between uh, some of the systems. I do love if you have not watched, uh, you know, our our show before, and I've not said this before to everyone out here. Uh, I have pretty much equal love between Dungeon Crawl Classics, uh, Numenera, and Savage Worlds. I do spread the love around. I I find that I can Wait. really what? Then why'd you kill a character today? Because she was talking to mom about. <laughs> Well, listen. You know what? If I'm running a zero-level funnel and you start talking like positive, you Paul's about, character, I right? did. But 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 you know what? You can't be talking about another game in DCC. <laughs> that's a rule. Sorry, so that's Paul, that's sorry. that's why Numenera. I really love running the game. It runs great at cons, and I think the weird of Numenera mixes well with the 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 fun of uh, of Dungeon Crawl Classics. Let's talk swag. We wait, got some wait, cool we have swag. More, more questions. I can't. Do in. we? They were all dead because the souls had been eaten. You're going, you can't just go back and read comments from Abe the Abe Simpson tells better stories. He does not. What kind of swag did you get today? Okay, so I have set up here the swag bag. I got, I, put, I got, Jen got me labyrinth playing cards for Savage Worlds. So I put together the swag That's pretty sweet. Swag bag. And I put all our swag in a bag, and I'm gonna draw from. I got the in at five oh, points. Oh my god! Look at in at five points, which Judge Evie and I play tested last yeah, year at Save Against Fear. First. That oh, was my. pretty cool. Look, our names are in it. Really? Yeah, we were play tested at Save Against Fear last year. See, look. What's the front name? Evie Walls. Oh my gosh, my name's in something. Cool adventure. I highly recommend uh, playing it. That's what Brendan ran, right? Yeah, keep, re keep keep talking. Talk. Okay, so in my swag bag, I swear if you interrupt me again, I'm not gonna be a happy camper. So, um, one of the first things we got was I don't know why, but my mom was really obsessed with this Starbucks bag that we got for with our sandwiches in it. So she decided to keep it. Swag bag. Wait a second. You're showing off like some... St I, I looked down for a second. You're showing off Starbucks bags? I'm showing what we got. <laughs> then, um, I'll put the... I'm just going to grab random stuff. So, this... <laughs> Show it off. So, I decided to do... You, you roll it a dice, and whenever you got... Like, there was like a prize level you could get. Show it. So, I got this shirt for, my, for Cooper. I think it's too small. What is this? I got some cool pixel art, including uh, Shovel Knight and Shield Knight, the best couple in gaming. 
So I got a bunch of these from last year. No, that, that's not that's from from Final Fantasy, but these are my favorites. I got Shovel Knight, uh, a a a a, a, a company or a local group there called uh, uh, Tori Borealis Pictures and Goods comes with pixel art, and Absolutely. they made it. They had a Shovel Knight there, and then a bunch of Final Fantasy characters there. Including, you know, a party you hold these together, ones. and and I had asked if there's a Shield Knight, the love interest of Shovel Knight, you know, in the game, and they didn't have them, but they made a Shield Knight for me that day, and I bought it today, so it was pretty geek. It was like ten dollars for one of these. It was like six dollars for the smaller ones, and then yeah, you could get they had the uh, Final Fantasy one characters, so I have all the Chrono Trigger characters. So they had Garland from Final Fantasy one. But they had all six of the player character rate uh, classes, so I was able to make my favorite. Uh, I was going to make just my favorite player, my favorite class list from Final Fantasy, which for me is the uh, is fighter is is my first. You know, fighter, uh, black belt, thief, white mage. That's my preferred character mix for Final Fantasy One. Just saying, I know a lot of folks are like fighter thief. Uh, white mage, black mage, or fighter, the uh, fighter black belt, white mage, black mage. But I'm all about not having the black mage is overrated in my mind. Okay, so next on this rolling thing, I was walking by and they're like, "Do you want to roll?" I'm like, "Sure." So I got this FIFA soccer ten. FIFA game ten for it's almost a decade old. My brother. Nice. And I'm probably going to be playing it too. Soon. How about dice? I know. I'm going to do what I got in the swag bag. Let's discuss dice for a second so here. next, Let's my first dice. time round, I got this spotted fire and ice game that my mom wanted so desperately. I have no idea why. Yeah, Paul. FIFA 10. Get with the times. Then. Oh. So, from our hotel, we got... I mean, no one gives a crap about that. No one cares about. No one cares about smart food. It's a regular size water bottle. What's the What's the brand? Water bottle. VIP. Put it in there. VIP, not VIP. And we let's got let's this discuss dice. Name brand. <laughs> let's discuss dice. We got some great dice today from Legendary Pants, or yesterday from Legendary so Pants. Awkward. We both got some. These are the ones I got. Mm -hmm. I love Legendary Pants' dice. These are a matte finished dice. They feel really cool in your hand. And I love them because the numbers are easily read it, like legible. So I, you, you look at it, you know what the number is. There's no question of what number you rolled. I got these ones. There were Tesla dragons. I put mine in my new Save Against Fear uh, dice bag, which I'm going to use for my dice. I think my traveling dice bag. I have multiple dice bags for many reasons, but this is my new traveling dice bag for DCC dice. Okay, wait. I have. What else you got? Let's, let's we're start wrapping things up. We're at 43 minutes. Tea, that's a big bag. Oh, tea. Yeah, so Tori Borealis Pictures and Goods also had tea, and we bought a crap ton of tea. We kept buying tea at the convention. So this Ravenclaw was uh, Moroccan mint tea with basil, strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, cranberries, cherries, sunflower oil, raspberries, natural flavoring, edible luster dust. That was pretty good. Oh, what was in the Time Lord's tea? This is black tea. Okay. One of the best things I got from that rolling thing. I missed so many times. Look, I got a pair of fishnet gloves. And I wore this to La Fiesta. The Fiesta gloves. Got those. We're almost done. We gotta wrap things up here, kid. We have this thing. We have the Save Against Fear. I gotta read, I gotta read that tonight. Oh, so with our dice bags, we got these ducks. And you got this weirdo one. It did. And then I got a toucan, which we put in the game. And then... Yawning. So I went... My mom wanted to go to this clothing store because we were really bored. Um, so, You're bored? No, we didn't have anything to do. So we went to the mall, which, you know, was great. And I found this uh, denim jacket here on sale for $15. And it's like 80 And so I got some pins to put on it. And I have this Pokemon Eevee one, a stitch. Brendan gave me this Contessa 2014 pin. And then I have Jack Skellington and Zero. And then... 
Paul makes a I've good point on... that the uh, Heisenberg dice are, are tough to read. He's he's quite I got quite this right there. Totoro pin. I also got a Totoro sticker for my computer. Let's let's go into and the next I phase. I got a sticker. I got. Let's for my let's computer. go into the next phase. Okay. Wait wait wait! I have my earrings to show. I know, but we got we got the next section. It's these running late. Deadpool earrings, and then we got from my friend John. Okay, let's. Well, don't show him that. We got a fifth edition adventure for John. Don't show it off yet. Well, well it doesn't matter what it is. It just knows he's going now. He's not even gonna watch it. So, all right. Next segment, we're going to go into road crew shout-outs now because we've had enough discussion here about this about the about the con, you know. Let's go into the road crew shout-outs. It was a fun con. We're looking forward to next year. Um, I hope more folks come out next year. Hope we will be bringing a posse with us next year to the convention. I'm making Gracie go. So, road crew shout-outs this year. Uh, at Sean Campbell has a road crew shout-out for DC Games Rochester, Minnesota. Did he say when the games are? Yes. All right. Do it in the in a crazy Sean Campbell voice. Just read the email. Judge James and Evie. <laughs> I really enjoy watching your show. The banter between you two is hilarious. Hilarious. I'm running a DCCRC games at DC Games. In Rochester, Minnesota, Mondays at 6 p.m. Oh, every Monday. That's cool. We are always interested in more players. We will be running the new Halloween adventure, Creep Scrag Creep, starting <laughs> October 21st. Thanks, Judge Sean. So Judge Sean's got some cool gaming going on at DC Games in Rochester, Minnesota. So make sure you check them out on Monday nights. All right, we're going to wrap up here. We're going to find us else. Where on the interwebs, uh, I at I live for crits on Twitter, living for crits on Instagram, and you can always search for our back catalog on YouTube at living for crits. Uh, if you've enjoyed the show on YouTube, please like, comment, and subscribe. We'll be back next Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern. I thought this is the show that ran long. We ran long, yeah, because you're going on and on about all the crap you bought. I didn't buy half of this. Or got for free. So at that point, it's time for our outro ASMR in which I'm going to say, Gryffindor. <laughs> yeah, that's one. You still can't pull this off in one shot. <laughs> it's just like hard to do. I'm gonna do it for you. No, no. What? What? It's <laughs> Just say it. <laughs> you would suck at the ASMR for professional professionally. Feed your soul. Good night, everybody. Hey, guys. No, I'm going to make an ASMR channel with pickles. Yeah, it's And gonna I'll just eat pickles. Yeah, it's going to suck. A girl who did that has suck. millions of followers. It's going to suck. <laughs>